be here with you guys tonight. Um, I'm going to attempt not to get tangled up in the cord. Um, it's just really, it's a real pleasure and a real honor to be with you guys. And um, I just love the joy. Y'all are so joyful. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah. That's something that gets lost sometimes in our Christian walks. And I love that it's here and yeah. everybody is super joyful. Um, as Miss Carolyn said, my name is Rebecca. I'm the, I work at Church on the Hill. I'm the co-pastor. I'm the next-gen pastor, which is basically everything under 25. That is what I pastor. Um, and so I love a little, just a little bit about me. Um, I grew up a church kid. I grew up a pastor's kid, specifically. Um, a little bit of my personal testimony is I grew up as the pastor's kid, and I was also the pastor's kid that was, I am not going into the ministry. It's like, I will stay in church my whole life. I will volunteer. I will serve. But I want a real job, and I don't want to go into the ministry. Um, God had very different plans. Um, he changed my path. Um, somewhere in between high school and college, he kind of threw me into children's work when we lived about three years on the mission field in Mexico. And when I say threw me into children's ministry, it was literally because there were three ladies and like 25 kids. And so dad was like, go do something with all of these kids. So that's how I got thrown into children's ministry and then found out that I loved it and I had a heart for Kids, that was where it started, and the Lord just grew my heart. And so before long, I realized I didn't just have a heart for kids. I had a heart for junior hires, and then I had a heart for teenagers, and then I had a heart for college kids, and then grown-ups. Um, and so, that's, so now I just have a heart for everybody and a heart for just people to find the Lord. And so thank you guys so much for having me. We're going to just go ahead and dive in. Um, with what the Lord, what I feel like the Lord has to say to us tonight. Um, if you, as you read the Bible, you find out that in, in the scriptures you can find multiple people that the Lord, through the Holy Spirit, takes them from one level to the next. And there's a few of them that he actually literally transports to a new level. Like he transports people from point A to point B. Because they just show up there in the scripture. It's like, and the Lord took me from here to there. And Ezekiel is one of those people. And so um, I'm going to read a little bit out of the book of Ezekiel in a second. But I was, as I was studying and I was praying, I was thinking about how as Christians, we're called to not remain on the same plane. We're not called to stay on the same level for one, for one lifetime. We're called to continually graduate from kind of plateau to plateau. We're supposed to climb in our relationship with the Lord. We're supposed to graduate in our relationship with Him because the Holy Spirit transports us to a new level. And what we're going to talk about, what I'm going to read is there's a scripture in Ezekiel 47. And if you don't have the message and you're attempting to follow along, I'm really sorry. Because um, <laughs> it's going to be a little bit different. But it says, now he brought me back. And Ezekiel's talking about his, the Lord has been transporting him all over the place. And he says, now he brought me back to the entrance of the temple. I saw water pouring out from under the temple porch to the east. And the water poured from the south side of the temple, south of the altar. And then he took me out through the north gate, and he led me around to the outside of the gate complex on the, complex on the east. The water was gushing from under the south front of the temple. Um, what Ezekiel is talking about there, it struck me. Normally, he goes on and he talks about that the, the angel of the Lord measures out water to his ankles, water to his knees, waters to his waist, waters to swim in. And I've always heard it spoken on that that's the part, the waters to swim in. That's where people really like to preach. But what struck me out of this scripture this time is the water poured from the temple. The water flows out from the temple. And as we learn in the Bible, we are the temple of God. 
It is not a place. So we being the temple of God, the water of life is supposed to flow out of us. It is supposed to rage forth from us, from who we are. We are the temple. So the water is, in this passage, the water is flowing from the temple. And it goes on and it talks about um, a little further flows, life will flourish. Great schools of fish because the rivers tur turning the salt sea into fresh water. Wherever the river flows, life abounds. If we really are walking in the fullness of God, in the spirit of God, in the life-giving water as the Holy Spirit pours out of us, as the life of God pours out of us, if we're doing that correctly in line with the Lord, then this scripture would be true for us. Life should grow wherever we are. And it even says that this water had the power to turn the salt into fresh water, which means we have the power and the authority to change the atmosphere, yeah, yeah. to change things that are not of the Lord or not of God or not working. We have the power to insert life into it and to bring a change. If you go back to verse 30, to chapter 37 in Ezekiel, it's one of my favorite passages. And it's where the Lord brings Ezekiel to this valley of dry bones. And growing up, reading this passage, it was like, why would you want to look at a valley of dry bones? That was just gross to me as a little kid. Um, but it's so cool. And it says, God grabbed me. God's spirit took me up and set me down in the middle of an open plain strewed with dry bones. And he led me around a lot of bones. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I said, Master God, only you know that. And he said to me, prophesy over the dry bones. Listen to the mes message of God. And so God tells Ezekiel, he brings them, and all Ezekiel sees is death. And sometimes as we walk through our Christian life, it's really easy to focus on all we're seeing in our world is death and destruction and hopelessness. And that's what Ezekiel's looking at. He's looking at a valley of dry bones. Things have been dead and gone and buried for a long time. And God asks him, can this live? Can this be brought back to life? And Ezekiel's like, I don't, I don't know. That's a question for you. Because he's probably thinking in his human mind, in reality, no, probably not. But by this point, Ezekiel has seen a lot of stuff, so he knows not to rule anything out with God. And so God tells him, okay, this is on you. You speak to the dry bones. You tell it. You speak. Prophesy to the dry bones. So what happens is Ezekiel does. He speaks to the dry bones. And he commands them. He commands them to live. And as soon as he prophesies life and he starts speaking life to the dry bones, he starts to hear the rustling. And he sees the bones come together, and then he sees muscle and sinews form, and then he sees skin form, but then he talks about that all he sees is cadavers walking around. You can look around our world today, and there's a lot of very well-painted, very beautiful, very talented cadavers in our world. Amen. Uh -huh. Because they're just like the dry bones in Ezekiel's wow. sight. Because they're, they look like people, they look like... There could be life there, but there isn't because nobody spoke it yet. And then the Lord tells him, speak to the four winds and bring breath back into these bones. So Ezekiel does. He prophesies and he speaks and he calls the life in from the four winds. And then the bodies are filled with life. And they come, these ones that were dry bones that were strewn across the land come back to life and they create what Ezekiel calls a
in places there were never life before. <coughs> it says in the Bible for let your yes be yes and your no be no. But it also says, thank you so much. It also says that the power of life is in the tongue. Mm -hmm. yes. Power of life and death. Yes. So, excuse me. With the power of life and death being in our tongue, sometimes we get so easily caught up in the irresponsible speech. year about it being faith and that you can't have faith unless you have the word of God yeah. because that's where the river starts the river starts with you and God and y'all's time together because as you read the Bible as you spend time with God as you are filled with the Holy Spirit then the more you fill up with God it's literally just gonna spill over and pour out of you wherever you are and if you're willing to be used and you say God okay I want to do this I want to be used. I want to speak life. I want to change things. I tell my kids, my youth group, time we spend with the Lord, the more time that he will spend with us. And as that river begins to swell inside of you and inside of me and inside of all of us that want it, it will begin to pour out. And so after, that's the first step of spending time with him, of constantly being filled and refilled, whether you've been filled with the Holy Spirit a hundred times just keep getting refilled. There's never enough. You can always get more. And so as the Holy Spirit just continually refills you, everything I say coming true because sometimes I say things sarcastically and I don't mean them but if they happened it would be really bad and so it's time that we be careful with our speech 
Because the Lord will give you the power in your words that whatever you speak will come to life if you can carry the character and the mantle of that. Because if you have the character to walk in that gifting, he will give it to you. But your character has to be able to handle the gift that God gives you. It's like not everybody can handle, like if you give a kid money to go to the store, they're probably not. My niece would go spend it all on candy. She would spend every, every penny she had on candy. In her mind, that's perfect. In reality, we know that's not a great gifting. That is not real responsible. So her parents don't let her do that. So God gives us things in portions to teach us to handle the weight of the giftings that we have. But we also always have the potential People don't really expect when you say, oh, I'm going to pray for you and I'll pray for that. They don't really expect it to happen. They're just like, oh, yeah, that's the nice thing we say. Like, God bless you, bless your heart kind of a thing. Like, that's just our nice thing of I want to end the conversation because I'm uncomfortable, so I'll pray for you. Like, that's a really bad, that's not a good thing. It should mean something. So when we say I'm going to pray for you, what that should say to people is this situation is going to change, and it's going to change now. That's the word I was looking for. If you're constantly thinking, I'm not good enough to do that, God wouldn't want to use me. I'm too old, I'm too young, I'm too this, I'm too that. And God's like, no, all I want is somebody that's willing. So all the Lord is waiting for is someone to say, I want to play. I want to do this. Count me in. I'll give everything. I'll give my time. I'll give my heart. Because we're looking at a world that all they can see is hopelessness. Mm -hmm. All they can see is I'm not good enough.
world and transform everything, but he's looking for people that are willing to be counted and willing to stand up and say, I want this. I want to fight. I want to join this. <coughs> Part of speaking life into things is you have to learn to see it. And sometimes seeing it is not easy because sometimes that can become overwhelming because it can look like all you see is the problem. But the Lord says, I'm going to show you things because I'm ready to change it. So maybe now it's time for us to stand up and the things we see that we could easily say, Lord, that's an issue, that's a problem. We need to look at every situation that the Lord is revealing it to us because he wants us to change it. Yeah. Because it's time for us to start saying, no, you're going to be healed. Don't accept that. Right. You're going to have a job soon. Your marriage is not going to fall apart. You're going to, you're going to make this. You're not going to get a divorce. You're not going to accept infertility. You're not going to accept this disease or that disease. You're going to speak life because as we change our speech, we can change the atmosphere. We can change the atmosphere in our city. We can change the atmosphere in our county. And it will begin to move and it will begin to circulate. And what will happen is as everyone in this room gets set on fire and starts speaking life, then they speak life to their circles that they're in. And that life begins to spread. Because then what it will do is it will change and it will begin to change our world. Because the Lord is so ready to move. He is so ready to bring grace and to bring life. And he's waiting for life bringers. Yeah. He's waiting for people that will say, I want to do this. I want to go love on that person. I want to speak life. Nobody, it might be that nobody ever knows what you speak life into. Because it might entirely be while you're sitting in your car and you're driving places or you're walking through Walmart and you just see things and you speak to them and you speak it out loud and you say, Lord, heal that person or change that person. And as you begin to do that, ask the Holy Spirit to show you. And then it will get to a place that when you look at people, God will say, this person needs this. This person needs this. Speak it. And we will begin to speak it out. Because if we can speak life to those dry bones, what it will change is it will change our entire world. Yeah. A lot of times, there's at least one really big dry bone in your own life. <laughs> that you're praying for and you just finally put it on a shelf because it's like, Lord, uh, I'm exhausted with this dry bone. But the Lord says, take it off the shelf, put it back in the middle and speak to it again. Because as you keep praying and you keep fighting and you keep speaking to that dry bone, it will come. Ezekiel doesn't really say like massively eloquent things when he speaks to the dry bones he really just like God tells him because God speaks to his spirit and then when he goes to talk to the dry bones he really doesn't say God's elegant elegant words again he just says I just said life to the bones breath to the wind you don't have to be eloquent being used by God is not just for pastors and preachers and anointed people. It's for everybody who wants the Spirit of God. Yes. And it's way more important that the people that are not in the church house on a regular basis, the people that are sit in the congregation, the people that go out into the world, it's way more important for every single one of those people to be super on fire and anointed and speak life. Right. Because not everybody comes to the church to get saved. Or when they, need, when they need something. In the workplace, in Walmart, in our everyday life, that's where we meet people that need Jesus. That's where we meet people. But I want to talk a little bit more for just a second.
about the dry bone in your own life. Sometimes it can become discouraging. Especially if it's someone close to your heart, like a kid or a child or a family member that you've been praying and warring for and it honestly just looks really hopeless. Because it looks like, Lord, I don't know that this is ever going to change. But I really believe today that the Lord is telling the people in this room specifically, as you press into me and you become my river and you start to speak life again, take the bone off the shelf, speak life to it again, and just keep doing that and speak life to every other bone that I bring you, have, to, have patience because this one will come to life too. Especially if they're in your family, you are the best witness. And it will happen in time. But the Lord wants to do it. And he says, just be patient. Because the change is coming. Because what really is coming is I really believe and I see just a wave of the Spirit, a wave of God coming, and it literally just crashes over everything and everyone. And we will have water to swim in, but you get water to swim in when every single person becomes that raging river. That's right. Then we all have water to swim in. Amen. And so I want to encourage you Step out into a new level with the Lord. Find one area in your life that you can, in your spiritual life, that you can challenge yourself. Whether it's fasting, whether it's, because our church is doing fasting right now, um, like a lot of churches. Whether it's fasting, whether it's something else that the Lord has kind of been poking at you and you've had that idea of, you know, I should do this. I should really just spend this much time with the Lord or something like that. Make a new challenge with yourself spiritually. And go deeper with God. Because the Lord is ready to take you to a brand new level. And as we step out into this new level, as we step up into the Spirit, we're going to see life come to pass. We're going to see that river begin to rage. We're going to see bones come back to life. Because we will be the life bringers that God has called us to be. It's really amazing when you just get to sit with the Lord and see his plan. And he gets to poke people out to you and say, that one. I'm doing this in that one. I'm doing this in this one. There's not a plan or a specific way to step into a new level with God. <clears throat> Other than really all you do is just say, okay, God, I want to do this. Count me in. Take me to a new level. You start asking for it. And as you start asking for it, the Lord will just kind of roll you into it. Because it's, it matters if you're willing. And maybe it's an everyday choice for you for a while. That every day you get up and you say, okay, God, I want to go to a new level today. Take me to a new level. Take me to a new level. The people in the Bible that were transported from place to place and given all of these, like Ezekiel and Daniel too, that were given all these amazing visions and dreams and used so powerfully of the Lord. They were willing and they were set apart. It's Corinthians, Colossians 3 that talks about being set apart, that talks about not filling our minds with the things of the world. It talks about being different. <coughs> being different in this world, being in this world and not of it. What that means is us walking on a different plane than everybody else. Not that we're better than them, 
But when we graduate to a new level spiritually and we're walking around, we're not of the same life they are. We're of a different level. But because we were there, we can turn around and we can see where they are and we can help draw them to the Lord and help them step out of where they are into the new level where God is. God is interested in resurrection. God is interested in healing, in restoration, in rebuilding. And I believe that this year that's what God wants to do. Is he wants us to look at dry bones and start speaking life to them. So tonight I would encourage you to take whatever that dry bone is in your life. Take it off the shelf and put it back in front of you. And say, God, I'm going to seek you for this again. And I know you're going to do this. So I'm going to keep praying and I'm going to keep believing and I'm going to keep speaking life that this will happen soon. Because it's okay to ask God for soon. Sometimes we think it's, oh, we shouldn't say that. We shouldn't tell God do this soon because we're ordering him around. No, it's okay. It's okay to say, God, I want this soon. I want this soon. It's okay to be impatient with God. It's okay to be unsatisfied with where you are. It's okay to always keep wanting a new level and a deeper thing with the Lord. Because the more you want, the more he'll give you. Because there's an unlimited amount. So don't be, just like Ezekiel was not bound by his own imagination. Because he could have looked at those bones and answered God and said, uh, no. No. They're dead. They're bleached by the sun. They have been dead a very long time. No. No life can come back here. He could have said that. And then he would have kind of tied God's hands because then God would have had a much longer conversation about Ezekiel's way of thinking. So sometimes our thinking needs to be changed first. So ask the Lord, Lord, help me to see the way you see. Help me to think the way you think. So don't be bound by our own own imagination and our own way of thinking. Nothing is impossible with God. So we need to go back to being like the little kids that ask for something and then say, and believe it's really going to happen because I asked for it. My niece knows if she asks her Grammy for something special, she's going to get a piece of candy. Like, it's a gift. She knows it. She expects it. And she asks for it repeatedly. And it's always there. God is like that. It's always there. If you ask, it's right there. Always. That's the way God is. He's not mean. He's not angry. He's just waiting with all of these gifts. Like, are you going to ask me? Because I have all this awesome stuff for you. Are you going to ask me? So it's time for us to say, Abba, I want this. I want this. I want to see. I want to speak life. Maybe you don't know how to speak life. Start by reading your scriptures. The easiest way is pray scriptures over people. Psalms, Proverbs, the blessings. Just start praying them over that person or that situation that is a dry bone. Start there. And when you do that, as we pray and as we just speak life over something, our world will change. So I would encourage you this new year, throw everything out there at God and see what he does with it. Because he's ready to show up big and he's just waiting for people to ask. Mm. Amen.